Okay, welcome to this video, which is going to further explore the photo editing options on the iPhone using the built-in Apple Photos app. And this applies to both iPhones and iPads. I happen to be using an iPhone model 6S, uh, and I'm running on iOS version 13. What we're going to do is we're going to continue some of the topics we discussed in the first version of this video, uh, part one. And this is part two where we'll get into some of the more advanced features. One of those advanced features is the ability to make a duplicate of the photo before you start working on it. Now be aware that anytime you do editing on the iPhone and you change some things, there's always a way to undo those changes and get back to the original. So you're not necessarily doing this for the purposes of being able to get back to the original. Instead, you might like to have two literally two copies of the photo appear in your in your phone or on your iPad and be able to flip back and forth to see the before and after of, of the changes you made. Now not a lot of people do this but it's kind of an advanced advanced tip so let's see how you do it. I'm going to tap on the share icon in the lower left corner and uh, then I'm going to scroll up and I'm looking for a feature called duplicate. There it is right about the middle of the screen. Let me tap it and nothing appears to happen, but it did make a duplicate image. So there are two versions of this photo. So let's go ahead and start, uh, let's, let's edit the second version. And I'm do that by clicking on the word edit in the upper right corner. Let's do that. And we're presented with the image. Uh, we see some tools here along the bottom. We see cancel and three icons and then at the far right corner at the bottom is the word done. It's grayed out, meaning it's not active right now. What I'd like to do is I want to start by cropping this image, uh, maybe to get rid of some of the really dark sand in the foreground, maybe to, to get a little bit tighter uh, uh, composition here. So I'm going to go to the icon second from the right. It's the one that looks like cropping squares with little arrows, uh, rotating arrows. I'm going to tap that and the first thing that comes up is the ability with these hash marks along the bottom to straighten the image. So watch what happens when I click and drag my finger along the bottom. Now you'll notice that when I do this there's a number that appears in the circle to give me a reference point and zero is where we started and frankly that's pretty darn close. You might also notice that when I start this a grid pattern appears on the image and that helps me to do some lining up of the of the image. Now again I'm using my finger and this is not entirely precise but it's it's darn close for our purposes here. However n notice also that there's a border around the image that wasn't there a moment ago the white line and the heavy corner markings. This allows me to grab, say, the corner and move it up inside. I could grab the bottom of the image and move that up a little bit. Um, I kind of like the clouds. I don't want to crop in too tight. I'll just make it a little bit, little bit tighter. I'll come in from the right a little bit. Okay. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to avoid uh, putting the horizon line smack dab in the middle and as I start to move these cropping squares, do you see the grid pattern that applies? In this case, we see uh, the image divided in thirds, vertically and horizontally. And this is a reminder for what photographers call the rule of thirds in composition. So um, if you're familiar with that concept in photography, then you, you might be happy to find that the, um, the iPhone's Photos app will bring up that grid to help remind you and make those adjustments. Now once I've kind of set this up, uh, the next thing I might want to do is um, go into what I would call editing or adding uh, artistic effects. Before I leave the screen however, I want to point something out. In the upper left corner we have two icons um, and the second one from the left corner is one that you might use when you take a picture and it comes up on your phone and it's out it's not rotated properly this allows you to rotate rotate images 90 degrees by tapping so this photo doesn't need it but you might have other photos where you need to do a rotation 
The one to the left is, is flipping on the horizontal axis. This is used very rarely in, in my opinion, okay? But um, from here we can, we can march on. Now, at near the bottom, or at, along the bottom edge, are the icons in the very middle. You see three overlapping circles. And if I tap that, a small yellow dot appears underneath it. And above it, we see these little squares and if I start scrolling my finger, watch what happens to the photo. We start to get some pretty interesting looks. So all I have to do is kind of drag my finger to the left and right, and I can go from one, two, three different versions of a black and white image, along with some artistic looks. And they have names. This is just sort of a reference point if you find one that you like. You can kind of make note of it. Oh gosh, I always like um, dramatic. Um, you can make most of these changes using the other tools we'll discuss in a minute. But you know what? If you that's the original. If you find it a version you like, let's say dramatic, you could tap the word done, which is now illuminated in yellow in the bottom right corner, and you would have edited the image. Okay, so. That's pretty nice. Um, you can crop the image pretty easily and you can do some pretty nice artistic effects by just scrolling among the different filters that are offered. But let's get into a little bit more depth here. I'm going to tap on the icon to the left of the filters icon. It looks like a dial. I'm going to tap that and it's going to bring up a number of circles that appear under the image now and they, ha they have different names exposure, brilliance, highlights, shadows, contrast, brightness, black point, saturation, vibrance, warmth and tint, sharpness, definition, noise reduction, and vignetting. Now if you're used to doing photographic uh, editing on with fancier tools on your computer, either a Windows or a Mac computer, you might be kind of impressed to find that you've got these kinds of tools right here in the Photos app on your iPhone uh, or your iPad. So um, don't overlook these. Um, you can spend time experimenting with them. Let's use exposure here. Um, when I tap it, and I start moving my finger along the bottom by sort of grabbing these hash marks down here and moving this left and right. I'm adjusting the exposure. Exposure is uh, roughly described as brightness. Um, and you might like actually a little darker interpretation of this image, make it a little bit more dramatic. Or you might like it super bright. I, I'm gonna darken a bit. And you'll notice the number there, that's sort of a reference number. Uh, negative 26 so I kind of remember what I did here if, if I want to take note of that if I want to turn that off and on I can tap on the circle and it keeps coming back to negative 26 or no effect at all okay so this is kind of handy let me come back to automatic uh, a lot of people just tap auto and auto is uh, the the phone or the iPads version to kind of spruce up the image in a, in a way it thinks appropriate. Let's tap that and see what happens. So it made the image brighter, which I really don't care for. If I tap it again, I'm undoing that, that uh, adjustment. Also, watch what happens if I tap it. If I tap on the screen and then release, it shows me the before and after. This is the after, but that's before. And look at the letters that appear in the upper part where the sky is, cropped original. That's a reminder that that's the before, and then that's the after, okay? So at your convenience, I encourage you to go through and, and play with these different things. Let's talk about one other thing that I think is kind of fun. I, I will tell you that now if, if, if I was finished fooling around, I would touch the word done in the lower right corner. So let's say done. And now this is the edited version. Not much change. I didn't do much, did I? But let me come back here and tap edit again. 
And now in the lower right corner is the word revert. This means that by tapping that, it says revert to original will remove all edits made to this photo. This action cannot be undone. And I'll tap it. And now I'm back to the original. So side by side, that's the literally the original that was taken with the smartphone. And then this is the duplicate. So let's do some quick edits here. Quick, quick, quick. I'm going to do a quick crop. And I'm going to go to the uh, filters. And I'm going to look for that dramatic look, kind of like that. And then I'm going to go to the effects with the, the dial. You Again, notice that small yellow dot. That reminds me where I am. Um, on exposure, I'm going to try to make this even more dramatic by making it darker. I'm going to darken it way down. Okay. Now, there's one more thing that's kind of a hidden treasure here, and that's in the upper right corner, you see a gray circle with three dots. Let's tap that. It says Options, and then Scanner Pro, and then below that it says Markup. Let's uh, tap on Markup. And these are the Markup tools, which, as you might guess, allow me to make marks on the image. In other words, if I wanted to circle something with something that looked like a pencil or a pen or a felt tip marker, I can do it. Uh, I can change the color when I make that mark. And then I can do some other interesting things uh, that we'll talk about in a second. So let us uh, let me get one of these tools here. When you tap it, it, it elevates a little bit. It shows it's in red. Let's see what happens when I start moving it around. So I've got a very thin red felt tip marker going. Frankly, that's not what I was looking for. So at the, up, at the very top of the screen, in the middle, you see a circle with a blue arrow pointing backwards. That's the undo key. Let's tap it. And I just undid that. Okay. Let me tap the marker again. And now I've got some settings on the marker. The thickness of the um, marker and the, th the intensity, the opaqueness. Is it se semi-transparent or is it fully opaque? Let's see what happens now. A much bolder kind of move. Not something that you want to do on a landscape, I agree. Um, but imagine that you've got something, uh, maybe you've got a screen capture of a map, and you want to circle the destination for a get-together with a friend. Uh, this tool comes in very handy, because then you just email the edited version to the friend and say, here's where we're meeting for lunch. Now there's one other nice feature in Markup that's, again, sort of a hidden treasure here. At the far right of the tools at the bottom is a plus sign. Let's tap that. And now I have access to some new things. One is something that says text. This will allow me to write on the photo. I'll have a, a, a few choices of font and the size and the color. So it's not ultra fancy, but it's not a bad way to put some writing on an image if you'd like to. At the bottom, we also have some uh, symbols. So if I tap a symbol, it'll bring up one of the geometric shapes and I can change its color um, and I can move it around. Again, this is not something I'd be doing on a landscape, but it's nice to have for a variety of images. Let's hit the plus sign again. And I'm going to go to text. Now, it's hard to see because it's right in the middle and it's black text against a very dark ocean. But in the middle, you see the word text surrounded by a rectangle in blue and blue dots on the left and right side. Watch what happens when I tap right in the middle of it. I get the choice to delete it, edit it, or duplicate it. I'm going to edit the text. And sure enough, I get my keyboard so I can type something different instead of the word text, I can put in something like nice, not mice, nice, sunset. Okay, and if I tap um, 
somewhere else on the screen, it's nice sunset in black against the dark ocean, not really what I want. So let me tap on it again. And I'm, instead I'm gonna tap on the yellow color swatch. And then I'm gonna take my finger and drag it down into the dark part of the sand at the bottom. Now again, on the far left edge of the tool, this is where you would adjust how big the font is, whether it's left, center, or right justified, and which of the fonts that are available. So we can say noteworthy, a little bit bigger than before, I tap away, there we go, nice sunset. And it's placed, let me move it up just a tiny bit, okay? And if you tap away, it accepts that as a change. You can sit there and say, well, that's not bad for an edit. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and say done in the upper right corner. That means we're done with the markup. We're still back in the photo editing thing that we've explored before. Now in the bottom right corner, I see done illuminated in yellow. I'm gonna tap that now. And now we are finished with all of the editing. So if I swipe to the left, I see my original. And if I swipe to the right, I see the edited version. So I hope that helps you with your photography, especially your smartphone photography, and opens up a few horizons in terms of uh, the kinds of things that you can do to either document an image with using the markup or maybe to apply some artistic effects to enhance the images. Thanks for watching.